the DVD comes with a short and not that great featurette, mostly promotional, even though it gives stuff away. But it also has two commentary tracks, both of them with, with Kurt Wimmer, and in one of them he's joined by producer Lucas Foster. There's also Jump to a Fight feature, the Gun Casa clips, TV spots, and a trailer. When Preston is running past people and no one is really reacting to it, my take on it is that they're afraid to turn in a Grammaton cleric. Same reason why nobody speaks up when Tay Diggs hams, I mean delivers, that loud speech about how this was a cleric who felt. The twist of Angus McFadden, I think that's how you pronounce his name, is Father didn't really impact me, maybe because Father looks so darn much like Sean Bean. For a long time I thought it was just him, and other than that it just seems really obvious. I mean, who else could it have been? I mean, did anybody really think that it wasn't gonna turn out to be someone we already knew? There's something about the way some of the action scenes had bullet holes appear along a wall. I'm not sure how to put it into words, but it just seemed unique. It didn't look like anything I'd ever seen before. Maybe because of the way it held the shot as the bullet holes appeared. We're used to, in action films, cutting back and forth between the person shooting and the person or area getting hit. It also properly seemed like a slaughter once they started just killing the sense offenders. You know, around the time Kurt Wimmer makes his cameo appearance. I didn't at first realize that there was blood on the visor of that helmet, though, in that same scene. The puppy thing was kind of manipulative, but it worked. Come on. Did anybody not want this government just torn down, no trace left, once they started shooting puppies? Loved every single action scene in this. At the beginning, where they actually shoot and apparently don't hit him, and seconds pass, it's complete darkness. And several seconds just pass in the complete darkness. That was really brave. And as Wimmer points out in the commentary track, it actually has a greater effect than when you can just barely make out some stuff. And then you see the flashes of him shooting, and apparently that was a low-budget solution. They didn't have the money to properly do it, so that was what they did. It worked! And then when he gets spotted with the puppy and the two shotguns that he just flips around and grabs, and after he grabs one, you see zoom in on the panicking guard, grabs the other, zoom in on the pan panicking guard, shoots them both, and then continues to shoot everybody else. And in the Wimmer cameo scene, where he says, go, go, much better badass voice in this than Batman, where he kicked that one further notches, that was pretty bad. And he holds the guns, the little prongs come out of the clips, we get the line, he's a sense offender, and he just wails on the bastards. And then as he walks through the long hallway, just taking out every guard and reloading twice, the first set of clips coming out through his sleeves, and the second were the ones he rolled out onto the floor at first. I could go on, but I won't. Oh, and everything with a sword in this pure awesomeness. When Tay Diggs was going to execute Kurt Wimmer and the other sense offenders, I did kind of think that Preston was just going to kill them all, especially once he had both guns. I don't know, I guess if one had to explain it, it's that there was another Grammaton cleric there, and there were other people. If he killed the Grammaton cleric first, the others might hit him, and if he didn't kill him first, the cleric might kill him while he was busy with all the other guards. I also like the religious implications. I also like the name clerics, you know. Again, making that connection to a sort of religious dictatorship. It was maybe a little bit easy. Not only was the underground so well organized already, they had already placed the explosives on the prosium producing plants. 
that pester the population, probably prompting precariously. I'll stop now. I mean, it was really easy to win the fight. Basically, father had to die. I really like that you found out that the kid had been off Prozium since the mother died. So all of his creepy, non-feeling behavior was an act, and when he yelled at his little sister for playing with the food, it was because he wanted her to keep up the act. And he was testing him. He was seeing if John was ready to abandon Prosium. You know, he asks, should I have turned in that other kid because I saw him crying? And granted, maybe that does take some of the tension away. You know, on repeated viewings, when you watch that scene, and you know, both of them are actually off Prosium and want to be. But on the whole, it was still cool. There were too many twists at the very end, though. The gun swap worked somehow, even that makes absolutely no sense, because that gun had been fired by Preston during the sweeper killing scene. Which happened before he swapped guns with Tay Diggs. Also, he fired two guns. Plus, he used both shotguns. And finally, did he leave absolutely no trace of DNA there? Not a hair, nothing. Second, Tay Diggs is gonna die. Third, the kid is off the prosium and has hidden John's supply so that he won't be found out. Fourth, Tay Diggs is still alive. Fifth, they didn't buy the gun swap theory, making that entire other scene pretty pointless. And then we find out that Angus McFate and his father. Okay, stop. Not hammer time, kill your darlings time. Too many twists. Anyway, those were my thoughts on Equilibrium. I hope you enjoyed it. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a corrupt dictatorial government to throw.